Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Elementary Education Multiple Subject Exam, and here are the exam codes, 5001 and 5003 for this particular Praxis exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for uh, this particular uh, teacher certification exam. And what we're going to do here in this particular uh, video is take a look at a math practice problem that you should be able to dispatch with pretty easily if you're fully prepared for this particular Praxis exam. But before we get to that, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years, I've constructed many online math courses to actually include a Praxis Elementary Education Multiple Subject Exam 5001-5003 test prep course. So uh, the way I approach <clears throat> um, building courses for particular exams is I go in and really take a look at what's on that exam. I try to build a kind of customized uh, math course to help those of you out there, you know, study for it. I don't want to give you too much math, but I don't want to give you too, uh, you know, not enough math as well. Okay, but you know, for elementary education exam, you're not going to need to know the kind of math you're going to, uh, you would have to need if you're you're going to be a high school math teacher, obviously. Okay, but a good characterization of the kind of math that's on this particular uh, exam would be high school level mathematics. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of algebra, geometry, amongst other topics, okay? But you're not going to have to know, you know, you know, uh, pre-calculus type of things. You're not going to be facing that type of math. Um, but, again, uh, oftentimes elementary education uh, teacher, uh, teachers, um, you know, sometimes if you don't take a look what's actually on an exam, you can say, well, it's elementary education, so I'm going to have to really know place value, um, decimals, fractions, uh, and yes, you need to know that stuff as well, but you're also going to have to, again, know a fair amount of high school level mathematics. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at this practice problem. <clears throat> okay, so the way I like to do these little uh, videos is tell you what the problem is, okay? And then for those of you who can solve the problem, go ahead and pause the video and do so. And... Uh, then for those of you who need a little bit of a hint, I'm going to give that uh, to you now. So here's the problem. I got four numbers, and I'd like you to find the mean, median, mode, and range. Okay, so for those of you who can uh, understand the problem and can do it, go ahead and pause the video and uh, knock this thing out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give a hint now. So if you don't want to hear it, obviously pause the video. All right, so what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about, you know, basic uh, statistics, if you will. And these things will, um, are generally referred to as measures of central tendency. So we're trying to find tendencies. Uh, we're trying to measure tendencies in data. Okay, that's the whole idea behind statistics, trying to find, you know, trends, etc. So these are some of the more uh, basic things that you want to, uh, you definitely need to, be able to uh, know for this particular exam for sure. All right, so we have the mean, median, mode, and range. You hear these words quite frequently, uh, like in the news, right? Let's say uh, the median home price in XYZ state is whatever, right? So that word median means something different than the mean. These are have these things have very specific definitions. All right, so here is a hint. Okay, the mean is the average. Okay. So for those of you, it's pretty common uh, that people confuse the mean and the median, but the mean means average, okay? And hopefully you know what that is. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and calculate each one of these things now. All right, so we have four uh, values, and the way we calculate the mean or the average, let's start there, all we're going to do is add up all four of these numbers and then divide by four. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 plus negative 3 plus 0 plus 10 divided by 4. Okay, so here I have 2 plus negative 3. That's going to be negative 1 plus this 10 over here. I'm going to have 9 over 4. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Uh, I could turn this into a decimal, but you know what? Let's not... Uh, we don't need to take that extra step right now. If you had 9 divided by 4 as your mean, 
or the decimal equivalent, then that's good to go. All right, so now let's talk about the median. All right, so that was the, uh, the mean, which is, of course, the average. All right, the median is basically the middle number. Now, if you look at that word, uh, the median, it's, it's almost like the middle, all right? But in order to uh, determine what the middle value is here, we have to put these uh, numbers in order from lowest to highest, okay? So what is the lowest number here, okay? Well, negative 3, in fact, would be the lowest number. And then what's the next lowest number, all right? So hopefully you say, oh, that's 0. And then we have 2, and now we have 10. So before we can even uh, <clears throat> figure out what the median is, we have to first put our values in order from lowest to highest. Okay, now the median is the middle number. So for example, if I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, what's and this is obviously uh, ordered from lowest to highest, the three would be the median, okay? So we have two numbers on uh, beneath that and two numbers uh, above that. So it's the middle number is the median. But in the case right here where we don't have uh, a middle number because we have an even number, what we do is we take the two middle numbers, okay? So that the two numbers are closest to the middle. So in this case it would be zero and two, and we're gonna find the average. So 0 plus 2 divided by 2 is what? Well, that's going to be 2 over 2 or 1. Okay, so our median would be 1. Okay. All right, so now, uh, now that we're beyond that, let's go ahead and take a look at what the mode is. Okay, so the mode. The mode uh, is basically, and sometimes there isn't going to be a mode. In this case, there actually isn't. The mode is the value that appears the most in a set of uh, numbers, okay? So here, each number is is appearing just one time. So for example, let's go back to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, okay? So if we had this situation, because 1 appears uh, the most frequently in this set, it is the mode, okay? Uh, but here, because there are no... Uh, repeating values and there's not a number that's showing up more than once we have no mode so there is no mode all right so now let's go ahead and take a look at the range so the range is basically what it describes it describes the distance uh, from the lowest you kind of think of it as a distance from the lowest number to the highest number let's look at a more basic example if i had uh, let's say here three six 10, okay, the range would be the highest uh, value subtracted from the lowest value. So that would be 10 minus 3 or 7, okay? <clears throat> so, excuse me. So in this case, uh, what is going to be the range? Well, our highest value is 10, and we're going to subtract it from our lowest value, which is negative 3. You got to be really careful here, okay? So 10 minus minus 3 it's going to be 10 plus 3 or 13. So that is our range, meaning that <clears throat> negative 3 is 13 units away uh, from 10, <clears throat> excuse me, on a number line, okay? All right, so if you were able to do this problem without the hint and you got everything right, then that's pretty good, okay? Uh, definitely, you know, shows that you are... Uh, you know, I've been preparing for this particular uh, practice exam. Uh, if you, you know, understood this with a couple hints and whatnot, then that's good too. This is, I would classify this as a pretty you know, easy problem, right? Obviously, uh, if you know what the definitions mean, then, you know, of course it's going to be easy. But if you struggle with it, you know, just use it as feedback. Again, um, uh, with these exams, especially for this praxis exam, you're going to have to immerse yourself in a lot of math that you probably, you know, I'm just going to make an assumption that, uh, you know, all of you out there have taken a kind of the math uh, by virtue of you being in college, et cetera. You've taken this math before, but you've likely been away from it for a while. Okay, so uh, just brushing up a little bit here and there 
is not the way to go in my opinion okay you really want to immerse yourself and learn you know cover a lot of broad you know range of topics in high school level mathematics okay to include all the stuff at the elementary level as well so a course like mine could definitely help you out but use other other um materials classes whatever use the full scope of things you don't want to go in and and not do well on these exams as you may or may not know teachers do fail certifications exam uh, certification exams and sometimes have to go back uh, a second or third time so uh, you want to try to avoid that at all cost but let's go ahead and wrap up this video um, again i'm going to leave a link to my praxis uh uh, test prep course um, in the description of this video for this specific exam. So if you want to check that out, uh, the link will be there. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing because I'm posting new stuff all the time. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, uh, are you coming from another level? You know, maybe middle school, going to elementary school. That can happen, uh, uh, you know, certainly. Well, I went from high school to middle school thinking that, oh, you know, as the kids get younger, maybe, you know, dealing with the classroom issues will be easier. <laughs> Nothing could be further from the uh, truth. So the one thing I think at the elementary level, it's probably uh, there's a lot of misconceptions, I'm sure. Like, oh, those kids are so young, you know, it's probably so easy to be a second or third grade teacher. Yeah, uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, un unfortunately for you um, out there, and I kind of you know mean this uh, teacher to teacher, is the only people who are going to really understand what it's like to be a teacher are fellow teachers. You know, uh, there's people, everybody can say, oh, you get the summers off, and oh, it's so easy. Look, you could just, you know, uh, you just tell those kids to be quiet and, you know, focus and do their homework. Know that uh, teaching is an art and, you know, it's a combination of your professional knowledge and experience. So after you get past your certification uh, exams, if you're new to teaching, what you really want to do, and I'm sure you've been told this, you know, is latch on to those veteran teachers and really learn, you know, the techniques and until you find your own style and way. OK, and all of us as teachers uh, will eventually find what works best for us to get the best results with our students. But um, again, it's a great career, uh, challenging one for sure, but it all starts with these certification exams. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on this particular Praxis exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.